Welcome to the Celebrating Act 2 series of Power Tools for Men. Uh, I think this is number six in the series. It is number six, and um, it's part of the blueprint for healthy masculinity by the authors of this book, Leonard Simchek and Rick Bronick. Uh, I have to thank them in advance. Uh, they'll be on in just a minute, but I have to thank them in advance for allowing us to I don't know what you call condense maybe this their book, which is a a great tome. It's a wonderful read. It's a lot of fun to read. It's filled with uh, honest stories from men sharing intimate uh, thoughts and and uh, issues. Uh, and these guys are experts in the field. This is a it, somewhere in the front. It says other books by Rick Bronick, other books by Leonard Simchek. Uh, not only are they authors, and they've come together for this particular book, uh, but these guys are experts in the field of what I call men's issues, um, men's health. And uh, they're lecturers. Um, they run workshops, have run workshops. Uh, someday we're going to actually ask them how they came together, <laughs> met each other to get together for this book, because it's a wonderful thing. But we're up to, as Art said, the next of the um, major... Uh, aspects of a healthy masculinity, and they've broken it down into the word classics, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S, -S -S, and we're up to I, intention. And what I found interesting as I read this particular chapter, um, healthy masculinity, and any kind of masculinity, I guess, uh, is not, it doesn't just happen. You you really want to try. You want to. You have to create your intentions for it. Am I right, guys? I, I, this, by the way, let's meet Rick and uh, Leonard. Thank you for, for joining us, guys. Sorry, a terrible introduction, but <laughs> I'm excited about getting into intentions. Uh, well, well, thank you for having us, uh, Art and John, on celebrating Act Two. So grateful to be here. And and really, as four men here talking about healthy masculinity, uh, so important. And I, um, I, I think uh, building intention and mission is so important. And Rick, uh, I know uh, you and I have been working together on this book for over six years, and intention and mission are so dear to our hearts. Yeah, thank you, Leonard. And... One thing that John forgot to mention is Leonard is also has a TED Talk on fathering that has had over 110,000 views. I'm very, very proud of that for my co-author and good friend. <clears throat> so why is building intention and creating a mission so important for men? Well, I believe, and maybe you men can confirm that for yourselves, that when men have a mission, a purpose in life, they are so much happier, so much more productive, better family men, and so forth. Why? Well, that mission helps guide our lives. It gives us a reason for getting up in the morning, a reason for being uh, present, for putting our energy out there. It also gives meaning for our lives. It lets us know why we're here on the planet. What, what is this life about for us? It helps us set goals and move forward in our lives, whether that's with careers or with relationships or with service in the world, it doesn't matter we get to set goals by being focused on our intention and mission. And finally, maybe most importantly, our missions let us connect with something larger than ourselves to realize that we are just part of something that's much greater than our little selves. And that idea helps really focus our lives and give us that fantastic purpose. Uh, Mitch Album, who's a famous author, says the way you get meaning in your life is to devote yourself to loving others, devote yourself to your community around you, and devote yourself to something that gives you purpose and meaning. He says it very beautifully. Well, thanks, uh, Rick. Uh, you know, mission, as you said, is so important. And sometimes, uh, you know, one of the phrases that we often talk about is out of our deepest wounds come our greatest gifts. And out of our deepest wounds often come the gift of finding the mission in our life. And the other thing that we want to uh, highlight is intention. 
And intention is so important for us as we move forward to really be clear what what is the intention that we're going to have so that we can live each day very intentionally. This is what I'm going to be focusing on today. This is what's important. This is how I can contribute to the world and how I contribute to myself in relationships. And intention is an important tool that we're going to use. So I think that's, um, um, we we weave in mission and intention. I think, you know, Rick, I want to invite you to share that one story about uh, mission with Nicholas. Yeah. Thank you, Leonard. With pleasure. Um, I was a teacher for 35 years in Wisconsin. And in the summers, I taught a backpack course. We'd go out and do science activities out in the wild. We'd spend 10 days hiking. And one year, I had this student named Nicholas, who the previous year had been diagnosed with leukemia. And he was, he lost the whole year of school. He was in the hospital. He was going, he was almost died. A a um, bone marrow transplant saved his life. And when he healed up and got back to school, he came to me one day and he said, Mr. Bronick, I'd like to do your backpack trip. And I said, absolutely, Nicholas. And he went on the trip. And during the course of the trip, I do a mission process with these students um, that is very similar to I've done with men all over the world for the last 35 years. And at the end of that mission process, where they were students put together their powerful vision of how they want the world to be and their powerful action of how they're going to make that happen. Nicklin began to sob. And I mean, really sob. And all the students that were on the trip sitting around the campfire, you know, put their arms around Nicklin and supported him, Nicholas, until he stopped crying. And then I asked him, Nicholas, what is, what is so powerful about this for you? What has touched you? And he said, well, when I was on my deathbed and I got healed, I knew that God had some purpose for me, but I didn't know what it was until this very moment. And then he said his mission, I create a healed world by healing myself and others. And then the whole circle began to sob together. It's touching me right now, as you can see. I'll never forget that moment. Now to add more to the story, Several years later, Nicholas Nicholas completed his undergraduate work and wrote me an email and said, Mr. B, if you remember me, of course, of course, I remembered him. I have just been accepted to medical school and I'm going to become a doctor and fulfill my mission. And you can imagine how that touched me. And then four years after that, he let me know he graduated from medical school and was starting his residency. So Nicholas used his mission to drive himself forward to become a physician. Well, that's a beautiful story. <clears throat> you know, it, you know, I think that, uh, you know, Rick, you and I were brought together. We've been in men's work for 35, 40 years, and our mission has been to really help other men. We're very passionate about helping men um, really connect deeply within and to grow as men. And I think healthy masculinity is, is, gives, gives us the opportunity to just really grow and develop, maybe be the best selves that we can be. And our mission drove us to write this book. So, because we had this mission, we want to get this message out into the world. And so the mission says, okay, we need to have an intention to write this book and and again, we've been persevering for six years until the book was actually published. That's that's when you when you have an intention and it's combined with your mission. It's a driving force that just propels us. We have to do it, even with all the we had we had an agent and had difficulty getting a publisher, but we persevered, persevered, persevered until we finally got our book published, and with with uh, multiple multiple redrafts. But again. When you when you forge mission with intention, wow, it's a powerful force uh, to really move us into the world and and really bring out our best so that we can make the world a better place. It makes us unstoppable, Leonard. You're absolutely right. It, it, it is powerful. It, it really is powerful. Um, and the idea that we have intention every day. Long-term intentions, short-term intentions. Um, I think it's you've really touched on something that is truly male, 
uh, truly masculine. And we are, men are kind of different creatures from women. Uh, lo, what did the French say? Viva la différence. Good thing that we're all different. But we don't understand each other any more than women understand us. <laughs> so this book is a terrific uh, tool. One of the things that you guys do is at the end of the chapter, you have uh, exercises, stretches. Mm. Give me a stretch for intention. Well, you know, a stretch that might be is uh, if, if you looked at what talents or gifts do you have that really are called to be shared with the world? And how can you take those talents and gifts and bring them into your mission? So a mission is, you know, what, what is our purpose? And I, I would, uh, maybe the stretch is, is what can you do and how can you weave these talents and gifts and, and carve out a mission for yourself? And then today, what can you do today that will help further that mission. So as you said, John, every day we can do something that really help our mission advance. That'd be a great stretch. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, guys, and, and to the audience in general, um, uh, we encourage you, you can pick it up on Amazon and lots of other places to pick up a, a copy for yourself. But uh, if, you, if this is the first time you've watched any of our episodes, there's a playlist on Power Tools for Men and uh, on our YouTube channel. We will have the link down below in the description. I encourage you to see it because uh, in an earlier episode, it may have been the first episode, both Leonard and uh, Rick talked about uh, particularly difficult uh, childhoods that they had. And we'll say more than that, they fully revealed them in there. And uh, I think John and I both agree that we grew up in significantly different environments. Yeah. But there's still useful information, even for guys who grew up with basically no trauma uh, or drama in their in their early life uh, beyond the normal stuff that that all young kids, male or female, have going on in their life. Uh, so, uh, it, it, if you want, go back and start at, at chapter one. If this is where you're starting here, and uh, get a good sense for. Uh, what's under the hood with these guys and why they have become so prominent by dedicating their lives to helping right. men understand themselves better, uh, no matter what state, whether you're real happy with yourself or you're still searching for answers. Right. And of course, that brings us to, uh, because we're at the end of the, getting close to the end of the series, C-L-A-S-S-I-C-S. -S -S. We've got two left. What's next, C? The next is community. That's great, guys. Thank you so much. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.